Hey everybody, welcome back inside the stash. We're here taking a look at some stuff that has come into the stash recently. A uh, couple things I got off of, uh, well, one thing I got off eBay. Uh, some more gravity paint, that is. Uh, some Bai and the recent uh, HLJ shipment. So there's a, a little mix of everything for everybody here. The one thing I got off eBay, it's the thing I've been wanting for a while. I wanted to test this stuff and see how well it works. Uh, this is not a new product from Tamiya, but it is a new product within the confines of it being here in the United States. It's something you could not get uh, easily, would be the word. You certainly couldn't get it without importing it. And that is uh, Tamiya's acrylic paint retarder, which is apparently entirely too much of a thing to deal with <laughs> in focus, because there's just too much going on in the background there. But, ooh, do it this way. Far. There we go. So basically what this stuff uh, does is you mix it with regular Tommy acrylic bottle paint and uh, a ratio of 10 to 1. So one part this, 10 parts paint. And it uh, slows the drying time of the acrylic paint. Anybody who's trying to brush paint something, say semi-gloss black using the X18 stuff, knows that that very quickly turns into, if it's a large area, very quickly turns into a, a paint brush laden mess even with the best brushes so that's what this stuff is for obviously you would have to mix the paint in a separate tray rather than just painting straight out of the bottle because you can't you know put 10 part one part to 10 just out of the bottle uh you can also use this to airbrush tamiya paint in the same ratio to make it you know Hopefully, at least in theory, reduce the tip dry you get with some acrylic paints, which of course is when the paint dries on the needle itself. Uh, I know a lot of people will thin Tamiya acrylics, uh, like a 50-50 ratio with like Mr. Leveling Thinner and things like that, but this is also supposed to be sort of the same principle. Now obviously this is, uh, is like, I think I paid $4 for this, plus like 3 bucks to ship it. Uh... You know, it's obviously a, a tiny little container of this stuff. You get a Mr. Level, well, Mr. Leveling Thinner. You get a giant, like, liter bottle of it for $15. So, price-wise, uh, this is not that great a value. But it was something I wanted to test to see if it was even worth having. So, you know, it was one of those uh, products, sort of like uh, uh, Tamiya's Mark Fit and Mark Fit Strong. Uh, that's their decal setting solution. At some point, I want to grab some of that just to see how it compares to uh, Microsol, Microset, and Solvaset. But... Uh, I haven't gotten around to it. This this popped up in my feed one day, and I was like, oh, that's a good price for that. I, I'm willing to test it for that, so there's that. Uh, like I said, we got some gravity colors here, just four, uh, because I was just grabbing some stuff that I was going to use for other uh, projects. Let's see if I can get this invoice out and fold it backwards, so you guys don't see my shipping information and all that stuff. You just get a white sheet of paper so that it'll focus the background. See, well, the thing is here, I have the camera in complete and total high def mode, which is great for your guys' video quality on your end, but it makes things, like, a little harder for the camera to focus on because it's trying so hard to keep the background in focus, too. So, you have this, which is Lamborghini Blue, uh, I'm going to say it's Hera Pearl. Uh, this is... I think, uh, technically speaking, on this bottle here, it's showing a, looks like an Aventador, or a Hurricane convertible, <laughs> or a Roadster, Spider, whatever they want to call it. Uh, this is not going to go on an Aventador uh, itself, or a Hurricane, or whatever the heck that's supposed to be. Uh, this is going to go on something else entirely, which is a project that I had meant to start and haven't got to yet, like so many things in life. This is uh, pretty pretty easily figure out what we're going to use this for. This is uh, your straight up Nissan uh, Jade Millennium. Obviously, this is for a GTR project. Should hold it this way so that I'm not blocking the light out. Uh, I have a couple of NUR spec R34s that will be painted that color. Uh, I've got this here, which is going to be also what the what the uh, bottle says it's for, and that is if I can uh, drop my background or the bottle. Did I not just say if I could not drop the background or the bottle? That was a prophetic. Let's try that a second time. Now try and try the second time without holding the the box the paint comes in. This is, oops, there we go, Alfa Romeo 
red, uh, Rosso, Alfa Romeo, whatever they want to call it. This will, of course, go on uh, the 155 Ti DTM cars that I have. And then last but not least is uh, a little Jaguar British Racing Green. This is the color you need to do your XJS TWR race cars. So probably end up getting another one of these at some point in time once we start working on those. But I wanted to have have it uh, to start with because, of course, not having the paint means I can't really start the project, in my mind anyway. My mind is like, well, if you don't have paint, there's no point in even starting to work on it because why bother if you don't have the paint for it? So there's that stuff. Uh, one thing we got outside of uh, Bailly and... and and the HLJ so far is this. This, of course, the new uh, Hobby Nunu, our new new hobby uh, BMW M6 GT3 kit. Uh, this company that made this kit is the same company that owns BMAX. Talked to a good friend of mine over in Hong Kong. We're hashing out exactly what this was all about because if you notice down here in the bottom, it says BMW licenses applied to BMAX Macau Limited. Maybe. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, I think you guys can read that clearly enough. Uh, and when you look at the uh, information here about what new new hobby model is, it's a company based out of Hong Kong, and Platts, of course, is just a company that's distributing it in Asia. Uh, right now, you can get these on Hobby Easy, which of course is a Hong Kong vendor, and then uh, M and S Hobbies. <laughs> I just realized it's just my head. <laughs> a little bit. That's more of me. Uh, M&S uh, Hobbies out in Arizona also was carrying this kit. They sold out of the kit, but they're supposed to be getting another shipment in. Uh, their price is going to be pretty much comparable, a uh, long term with what with the uh, with what you're going to get in terms of you know what you're going to pay the, for the kit in Hong Kong, and then it's going to import here and all the rest of that stuff. One other thing we got, whoa, just lost some tires. I think that was is the. Uh, Detail upset for it as well. Uh, you got a sheet of photo etch in here, some seatbelt material. The stuff in the blue bag is your uh, connector, air connector, which would be uh, what in the real car would put the car up on its jack stand, and then uh, as well as the antenna. And then there are three sheets of carbon fiber uh, in the background here. The carbon fiber is mediocre. I mean, the pattern looks okay to me, although the pattern is completely and totally uniform throughout the entire carbon fiber, which is kind of a hinky because carbon fiber used over a variety of surfaces in a race car, obviously, is not all uniform. Uh, but, you know, I can understand why when you're trying to make a commercially based carbon fiber decal set for a model kit, you would just go with, obviously, the easiest format, which is to make it all the same uh, carbon fiber. This is the instruction manual from the detail upset you can see it's two-sided quad side quad page uh, a lot of the carbon fiber you see here is going to be used on your uh, chassis pan there's a great big ch great big chud chunk here that goes uh, in the middle and then you have the back end here where the splitters are and then you have a, a, a couple pieces that go over the front end uh, there is a piece that goes as you see here over the top of the back half of the chassis to the top of the front half of the chassis and then you have your PE parts for your brakes and your window nets and stuff like that. You can give you all the measurements how to cut up your seatbelt so you don't plumb the photo etch seatbelt adapters. Up front here is one key part of the kit that is not in the kit itself, and this is what we're going to talk about in the kit review when we get around to it, is this tow hook here and the tow hook for out back. These are only on the photo etch sheet. They are not molded into the body. There is no hole for them on the bumpers. So you have to cut a hole to mount the toe straps, which are only on the photo etch set. These window nets, which are pretty prominent in the M6, uh, they are not included in the kit themselves. They're only on the photo etch tree. And then probably the most problematic of all of the things, at least in my opinion, are the dive planes, or the front canards, however you want to look at them, are also on the photo etch sheet. Now, the fact that there's carbon fiber for them, if I can get this to focus. <laughs> I can't move it over that way because it's trying to focus on the kits in the background. It's just not cooperating. I just I can't figure out which way I need to bend the, bend the pager. There you go. These, these dive planes, these canards that are on the front uh, bumper, really, 
yeah, there's two pieces of uh, carbon fiber that go on each top, and then there's the, this photo etch piece that has a microscopic, microscopic, tiny little piece that you bend down to glue to the bumper. This is going to be a, a, a just a hoot nanny as far as I'm concerned to try to get it to actually look right and get them on, because if you look at the way this mounts to the body, this one down here in the, where's my pointer at? Nah, I don't know where it is, so I'll use the corner of this knife and try not to cut my finger off with it. This one that's down here, you notice that's through the paint on the bottom here. This is a decal in the kit, this black and yellow part. You just paint the kit white, and everything else on here is done in decals. But, okay, they're, they're, because these are photo etched, and because there are no parts, again, no parts in the kit that, that, that represent these dive planes, there's no markings or indications, the indents, marks, anything, where these go on the body. So not only do you have to freehand all four of these, uh, and, and, you know, those ones on the other side and this one on these side, this side, rather. Uh, you then have very little material to work with to glue it on. Uh, and then this one down here, you're gluing through the decal. I told uh, a couple of different people now when we were discussing this kit that putting the front dive planes on is going to be basically akin to trying to defuse a nuclear warhead. Uh, you know, it's going to have to go on after paint. It's going to have to go on after decals. Uh, you're going to have to try to figure out some method. I'll try to shake the kit to get it all sit in there. You'll find some method for this all to work out where you're not going to destroy your paint job and your decals, which probably means you can't use CA glue, which you shouldn't probably use for that in the first place. You're going to have to try to tack up some tacky glue, uh, like the Aldine stuff, the clear tacky glue, uh, or uh, use the old, old, old uh, dirty trick of, if I can find where my bottle went. Let's see, this is clear. Nope, that's thinner. Uh, using the old dirty trick of using uh, gloss coat or doll coat, doesn't really matter, but using uh, a clear coat and painting the clear coat on the photo watch, waiting for it to tack up, and then using the clear coat as a glue to get it on there, which may be the best option when it comes to applying that over that decal. Why there are no dive plane parts in the kit, I assume will be because it would be out of scale. Um, you know, if you notice the built test shots of the model kit itself, there are no dive planes on them. All right, they're, they're, they're not on the kit itself, but I'm pretty sure that that antenna that's on top there is the photo etch antenna that's in the detail upset, which means to me that at least when this thing was being built out, the guy who built it couldn't get the front dive planes on. So that, uh, that should be an interesting situation. I, I really uh, am, am intrigued as to how this is all going to work. Other thing you have to consider is that while the, the I, I'll show it in a kit review, I'm not going to spend 20 minutes on it now, but all of it is a very silvery, bright silver carbon fiber, which is great for the chassis because I think the chassis is supposed to be a, like an aluminum color. Uh, but the, like the, top, the, 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 the carbon fiber is going to go on the top edge of the splitter, the ones that are going to go on these these die planes if you use them, the stuff that goes around the insert for the kidney girls, the stuff that goes into these uh, intakes for the radiator, as well as there being one carbon fiber piece that wraps around the top of the door frame itself, they're not silver. Not even close. So you're going to have to apply the deke. You're either going to have to do one of two things. Use the decals that come with the kit as a template and use other someone else's carbon fiber, or put the carbon fiber down and then put a couple of coats of Tamiya smoke on it after it clears to sort of darken the carbon fiber up uh, as far as the uh, shading of it, smoke being a clear uh, gray, for lack of a better term, would work for that. Um, but it's there's a lot of effort that goes into this. I'm hearing some are hearing some uh, people saying that there are issues with the bumpers, how the bumpers fit. Um, I don't know. I, I look forward to, to getting started on it. And at the same time, I sort of add it because, you know, it's going to come down to whether or not you can get the dive planes on. I mean, you leave them off, probably 95% of the people who look at the car won't realize they're missing, but I'll know they're not there. Uh, an interesting note is that you, of course, pulled this as the 99 car, which is the 24 hours of spa winner. I'm pretty sure that's what's on the side here. Nope. The side car is the 98 car. This is the team car that also ran at the 24 hours of spa. Uh, it finished 41st. I want to say that it didn't actually finish the race. It was like 160 laps down. Uh, so you can build the lovable loser, as it were. Uh, me, oh, me and 
uh, I, I provided all the reference photo and the motivation. That's what I'll go with. Uh, Frankie and I, who does, who's the, the uh, chief muckety muck and bottle washer at uh, SK Decals, are doing a Macau GT uh, supplement sheet for this because the Macau GT car uses the this row actually it uses this row the, the 98 car uses that this this row racing a row racing uh, livery with the row oil rather than being the row friends that are on the side of this car it basically required a addition of a decal back behind the wheel uh, changing out the number placard, adding some Pirelli uh, logos to it, which is fine because those are Pirelli P0s that are in decals for the tires that are in here already, so you don't have to worry about that. And then there are uh, a there's a, there's a uh, like a, a number and a driver name that goes in the back quarter window, and then you have a number that goes on the front wind, uh, windshield, and there's a Macau GT windshield header and a number for the roof and stuff. Not very much. It's only probably going to end up being like a 4 by 6 sheet of, of decal. Uh, but it'll allow you to do something other than just these two kits. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if anybody does a 2016 Nürburgring, uh, 24 hours Nürburgring uh, set for this, because again, uh, the, most of the decals are a, are going to be identical to the kit decals. You would just need to replace the placards with the, the, the Zurich 24 hour plac number placards and change out the, the, uh, tire decals to Michelin because that's what they run there. All right, so that being out of the way for the moment, until we go back more in depth and note, let's take a look at what we got at Bayi. Uh, I picked up another one of these. I already have this specific AMG uh, Tabic kit. I didn't really need another one, but because like I said I already have one, it came with the very impossible to find Shunko replacements for the Tabic decals. Basically, I paid thirty-five dollars for a set of decals, or I paid thirty-five dollars for a I paid. Twenty dollars for a set of model for a model and fifteen set dollars for a set of decals. Whatever it was, it came out to thirty-five bucks altogether. You can see these decals are moldy or, or stained or something. They're also yellowed. Uh, so I mean, I can't even offer them to somebody and be like, "Take this kit and build it the way it is," because the decals are shot. But I I wanted this for the set the, the top at car. I always also already have to begin with. This thing is molded in dark green. So. Uh, what this ends up being, in my mind, and this requires me to find another set of Shunko decals, so just, just something I troll the internet for and hope for the best, is there were three of these done. There's the uh, Pro Market car, which is not up there because I was looking at it the other day. There's a yellow Pro Market car, there's this Tabak uh, Sonics car, and then there was a D2 car. There's a bunch of little D2 decals all over it. Shunko did those D2 decals. If I can find the decals, I'm going to buy another kit. I'll just turn this into the D2 car because painting silver over green, meh, whatever. Not a big deal. I picked up my first one of these. This, of course, is the racing version of the Ford Sierra kit that uh, Tommy had did. Teeny me a little cute box. Uh, this is, of course, the Eggenberger Motorsports car from, I think, 1988 is what they're saying. Um, Frankie is going to be doing a bunch of decals for these RS 500s. We talked about that. Flag. I don't know. I think in one of the stash report videos, uh, I'm very tempted to go buy the Shunko replacement decals for this because they're easily you know they're, you can get them. They're still in production just to do this car. Uh, but these kits are really hard to come by, especially at a halfway decent price. Again, this was less than thirty dollars. Um, you know, I want to build some of the Macau cars, specifically the Watson's car, but the Watson's car is white. So I'd like to try to find one of the JTCC Premio ones. If I was going to, you know, start rather than painting this white, but we'll see as time goes along. And then, uh, because I'm just in a phase where if you sell me a BMW 635 uh, Group A car for less than $20, yeah, I said less than $20, I'm going to buy it, so shushing another one of those. Uh, there are a bunch of decals available for me in the aftermarket, so... Uh, worry not as to what I will be using for my for. I think I actually needed that one to just keep up with the decals I already bought. I also got, speaking of decals, three sheets of Shunko decals. These are decals I've been looking for for a while. Um, I actually bid on this first set and then lost them because they went for a price that was more than I was willing to pay. But these are Super GT decals for the GT3, later year GT3 cars. This is the uh, Green Tech Mercedes-Benz SLS from 2012. 
very basic design. The car itself is silver. I've got the uh, Hankook tires, 911 GT3R. This is a two-tone paint, obviously. The orange and silver stripes are on the decal sheet. Got to paint the black itself. And then last but not least would be the Food Artist GT3R from 2011. Again, uh, a two-tone that you have to sort of paint uh, in the sense that the silver on the top of the car, a.k.a. this this area through here and this area through here, are not on the decals. The red parts are. And then, obviously, this little uh, GT3 Porsche outline decal is also on the sheet itself. Uh, but, again, a very cool little piece because... Those are very, very, very hard to find. I didn't pay very much for them, which is always a good thing. Uh, but it fleshes out a little bit more of my Super GT obsession. That brings over the old HLJ crate here. So let's slide this a little closer so I'm not reaching six miles off camera every time. Uh, one thing I picked up, uh, and we'll see how much of this I actually use when I do the gold for it, is the... Uh, Studio 27 detail upset for the 911 uh, Carrera RSR Turbo. This is the Fujimi kit that was done as the uh, Circuit Wolf car. And it's coming out as the 24 hours of, or 12 hours of Le Mans, or 20, whatever it is. Uh, no, it's the 24 hours of Le Mans car, that's right. In here you get uh, some back form front rear windows. I'm kind of interested to see what is wrong with the kit's windows. I haven't got those out yet. You get some, uh, uh, what do they call them, uh, vinyl chloride plastic. For the side windows, there's a fret of photo etch in here and a bunch of turn metal parts to replace things like the turbo and uh, some other stuff as well, some seatbelt material. Uh, you know, I ended up buying this because I didn't realize they were going to do a specific set for the one set of decals that I wanted. Uh, I don't believe that the, unfortunately, that the, that the fog lights I need are actually in this kit. I've, there's the photo etch pieces to hold the fog lights, but the fog lights themselves, because they decided to do their own specific set for the decals themselves, which is kind of, like I said, rather uh, on the annoying side, but, you know, what can you do, I guess? Nothing, as it turns out. You can't do anything. And I realized, I hey, threw some of the decals I got up on the rack, because I don't need to take pictures of them for the... Didn't need to take pictures of these for scale mates in order to add them to my stash, but... Uh, one of the things we got, you know, here is the decals for the RSR. This is the, uh, 1977 24 hours of Daytona paint scheme. I got this paint scheme because it'll be the, one of the oddball cars. You know, it's not the 24 hours of Le Mans car. It's not the 24 hours of Spa car that's going to be done. It's not, uh, the... Six hours of Watkins Glen, which, you know, if people in America build it, they'll get that because it's USA, USA. This is also USA, obviously. But this car is uh, probably one of the ones that it has the least amount of anything. You know, if you, I could find one picture of it online, and it finished 50 sec, fifty second or something like that at the race. Did not do well, so it's another lovable loser. Uh, this is one of these situations where you have to paint, basically, uh, the side and front edge of the fenders black the rest of the car is silver and then uh the you know there's silver door panels there and there really isn't a whole heck of a lot else going on there this is interscope racing is who ran this car and uh i assume that's probably the record company right these uh second set of zeros over here not needed for anything because you use the ones with the outline literally says something on here about the other these other zeros being included for the, you know, basically the shits and giggles of it. I got another set of this, which is the Baha'i Tech uh, Nagar 2014 Nagaro uh, 12C. I already have a set of these, but as I sat around and I looked at them, I realized that the team cars are different, have, you know, uh, the overall striping package you use on both cars, but when you get down into the car numbers themselves, uh, one car is sponsored by Aptech, the other one is sponsored by Bemek, and there's uh, different uh, blade decals for the side blades themselves, and there's a bunch of, bunch of little differences between the two cars, which was enough to justify, in my mind, going out and buying another set. I got this, which is the uh, Puzzanguignon Racing 
2014 number 15 uh, car. People who know me know that I already have a set of these decals. However, people who, who know me also know that I had to sacrifice the uh, this. Whoops, wrong way. <laughs> this McLaren Brussels uh, logo for the rear wing to build the one kit, McLaren kit that I did build because when I built that McLaren kit, I tried to stick that. I, when I built the 12C, the McLaren that you guys have all seen, uh, when I built that kit, I tried to stick that decal on too soon, and it got basically stuck in the paint uh, itself because the paint was still wet and it was acrylic paint. And so, uh, you know, adding water to an alcohol-based acrylic paint, you end up reactivating the paint. And then I realized that I had put the decal on the wing upside down. So I had to strip the paint off the, the wing itself, and that, of course, destroyed the decal. So I ended up having to go into my set of other set of decals and get the wing decals out. So basically, I spent 16 bucks on a, on a wing decal. But, you know, it's one of the kits I want to build, uh, not so much next, but soon, because I want to build the, I've always wanted to build the team car, and I really could not build the team car because I uh, did not have the decals to do it. <coughs> one other Studio 27 set that we got. Is this is the Team Russia Silverstone uh, European Le Mans car? People will recognize this. This was the set of decals I was trying to do uh, with the Z4 that I was building, and I completely and totally uh, botched these front corner decals all up, and then I upped the roof decal all up, and that was the end of that project. Uh, and it really has been just sitting in a tub of a paint stripper ever since then. Probably destroyed the body. Couldn't care less because I just so I'm still annoyed at it. Uh, one other set of decals I got, and this will be uh, sort of finalizing, if you will, a project, and that is the Taboo Design uh, set for the Ivory Coast rallies. The Cote the uh, how do we put it, pronounce that? The Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, you see, you got like three years worth of of decal choices here. I'm not sure if it'll show. Well, it, it does show, but it's kind of, again, there's too much going on in the background. If I get this close to it, <laughs> it'll go into focus, but then, there we go. That uh, worked. So up here, you got the 83 rally, and then you have the 85 rally and the 86 rally. Basically, you know, dividing lines between all three of them. Uh, you use the same uh, overall paint scheme as the uh, Safari rally car. So it's white and red. And then I believe the photos I found online are of the 1986 rally that uses the exact same wheels that come in the kit. These ones use different sets of wheels, but this 86 set uh, use the use the wheels that come with the kit. All three of these years, the car won the rally, so these are all winning schemes. Uh, this back here, I believe, is the 1983 scheme itself, and then up front here, you got I think this is 85 and 86 is down here on this part of the sheet. So with this set of decals now being in hand, that project uh, can go forward whenever we decide to get around to it. And then the one set of brand new carbon fiber that came out this month uh, was the carbon fiber for the Tamiya Toyota GT1 TSO20, which is a 1999 uh, prototype racing 24 hours of Le Mans car. So this is actually three uh, separate sheets of carbon fiber. There's this little part down here. This is one sheet, and then there's a sheet that goes from here to here behind it. And then this little part up here that has the wing on it, this is actually a whole nother carbon fiber sheet behind there. So there's three sheets of carbon fiber in here. Obviously, this right here would be the dashboard. Uh, actually, no, it's not the dashboard. It's the bulkhead. Uh, but you can see on the back here, this is a two-sided instruction sheet. So there's all of this, and then there's more instructions on the back side. Uh, but it gives you an idea. There's a bunch of carbon fibering. Uh, you know, guys know I'm not a big prototype racing fan. I'm not a big prototype racing builder. I have the 1956 that I was doing as the uh, Buddy Watches a Buddy build uh, with Patrick. And then I've got the 1962C to do as the uh, 1JGTC car. But I'm a sucker for carbon fiber. And so, uh, yeah, why not? So while they were doing the carbon fiber, they also reissued their uh, photo etch set for the TSO20. So very basic uh, photo etch set. Uh, basically, you got some, you know, some grills and some radiators, photo etch seat belts. Uh, 
I believe these big long strips on here are the edges of the front and back parts of the rear spoiler. You got some Denso stencils if you want to paint those on. There's also decals in the kits for that. Uh, front dive planes are here. You've got the wiper if you want to put the wiper and photo etch brake, uh, you know, your, your pedal set. And then these up here are the like the outlines for the front for the doors on the side of the kit, so that's kind of cool. And then it's got all the various uh, vent decals for the side vents, which are not included in the kit in any way, so that's kind of a... Those will probably be pieces I use. And then there's uh, wheel hubs as well. So, as you can probably imagine, something I didn't have, so I had to go buy. I picked up the kit to for all, the, all of the accessories, obviously. And so we have ourselves a GT1 TSO20. It's a semi-full detail kit, being that it, you know, it does have an engine in it, but it's not exactly like a 50-part affair or anything else like that. It's a typical Tamiya basic kind of deal where you get enough of it to, uh, once you build it, what you would see is what you have, rather than it being, you know, a... Uh, you know, a domestic American kit where you're going to get, you know, 25 pieces and you'll never see 18 of them. So, uh, this almost wants to be on the table. Uh, yeah, even though I really, you know, don't have a primary interest in it, having the carbon fiber, having the, the photo etch, this does come with a, with a, a masking seal so you can mask off the front white part here. Uh, it almost wants to go to the front. I almost build this as a Zent car because it's, the Zent car is not the one that won is this car on the side of the box, which is not the one that finished in second place. Again, build a lovable loser. Do something different so that uh, you know it's not the same as everybody else's. Um, but yeah, uh, not because I like the car that much, or not because I have any particular like, ooh, I have to represent this 24 hours of Le Mans car. But again, it's, I have all the stuff for it now. Uh, also in this shipment, we got the uh, Delta HF Integral Evolution Lancia. So, of course, we've already talked about the, the Studio 27 decal set I have for this and doing the Japanese uh, Special Edition. Uh, so there's that. This kit I picked up because uh, it was on sale for something, summer or or some... I, Hobby Link Japan had a sale, and... When it was all said and done with, I got sixty cents, sixty six cents worth of shipping credit for buying this, and it was also, which should be, I think, like an eighteen dollar kit was like eleven bucks. So I got the a tuner version of the Subaru three hundred and sixty Young. This is the SS. This is the sporty version of the kit. Actually, this one came out originally, and then they made the factory stock version. Amusing. Um, we got this, which is the Susuga Island Circuit Noanami. Uh, Ferrari Daytona. I had one of these already. And then uh, my the vice president of my model club was like, hey, do you know anybody who makes a Ferrari Daytona kit? I said, you mean like the 365, you know, GTB4? Like the this Daytona, as opposed to the, you know, that weird, goofy thing that came out of Monogram that's, that has a Corvette chassis underneath, but that is the accurate representation of the Miami Vice Daytona, but not a real one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, said, well, you know, if you don't mind an Enthusiast Series kit, which is what this is. I mean, this is a full-on 200-and-some-odd-piece kit. I said, you know, it's still in production. I can get you one. And so I grabbed one, and it came in, and I could have shipped it over, like Rush shipped it. It was just easier to give him mine and then, you know, take this one. So that's just a restock. I sold mine, and you know, keep in, and I have this one. Uh, this is another Hasegawa re recent reissue. This is the Advan. Corolla Levin Group A car. Uh, you can build it as the 25 or the 26 or the 25 and 24. I can't remember which two it is, but it's a very, very basic uh, decal package. Uh, you paint the basically the butt end of the car and the bumpers and the mirrors red, and then there's black stripes for the side uh, as you go through the middle here. So it's a black and a red and a transition. But again, not a whole heck of a lot going on decal wise. I mean, there's literally. Unless I'm missing something. Literally nothing back here at all. <laughs> all the decals are on the door, and that's it. So that's a, another representation uh, of, of a Group A car. Uh, another one of the Skyline kits that have been revitalized by Aoshima. Again, this has like new hubcaps and stuff in it uh, to update it to a 1979 spec. I think you could still build this as an 81 uh, spec as well. And then I got the rest of my... Uh, 
XJE in, or XJS is, I guess I should say, HEs. Uh, now I have six of these, and that is all of the, all of them I need for all of the decal sets that I have. So, uh, build one factory stock as the 24 hours of spa car, one is the 500 kilometers of Donington car, one is the Gear Race of Macau car, one is the Japanese Intertech version, and then I have the, uh, the, the was it, they call that the rack, uh, the Canon Rack uh, Trophy Series car, and then uh, the Grand Prix of Bruno, Bruno or whatever it is. Uh, so the, all that together uh, ends up being six of them. And the SPA car, the Intertech car, and the one of the, the Donington car, and then one of the other two Studio 27 sets, I think it's the uh, Rack Trophy Series car, are all... Jaguar Racing Green, so we needed that. And that really, guys, is it for that box. I mean, there really wasn't a whole heck of a lot in there. Uh, it was more <laughs> more Jaguars than anything, right? And uh, I think that's it. I don't think I bought any you know, domestic kits here recently that you haven't seen. And uh, yeah. So, anyway, I guess that's it. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys on the other side.